This mechanism is an alternative floating plane. It has quite a nice action as it opens and closes. It sort of spins around. Underneath, it's quite complicated. Most pop-ups have only three folds, two where they stick to the page and one above the page. This is a weird one, because if you look at these pieces at the end, above the page, there's three folds, which is very unusual. So I've got three books that show examples of this. This is The Night Before Christmas by Robert Sabuda. And here, this is the mechanism. You can see it's a floating plane with a parallel fold built on top of it and all sorts of other bits making the figure. As it opens and closes, you can see it, it moves around into position. The second one is also uh, by Robert Sabuda. This is from The Movable Mother Goose. And it's here. One of the small side pop-ups, it's this one. It's the chicken. It's a diagonal floating plane. The underlying structure is the floating plane. This is a parallel fold on top of it. And then this at the top is a V-fold. The next book I'd like to show you is this, the pop-up facts, human body. Here it is, the diagonal floating plane. This is a parallel fold on top of it. Quite a simple one. Because it's so simple, you can actually look at the underneath, see the underneath structure. You can see it's, this is the piece of the three creases above the page. And then there's a pillar here that is holding up one side of the plane. And if you look at the other end, there's another pillar here. There's the basic structure and then two pillars that hold up the two sides. Here's my version of it, and you can see really clearly there's the, one of the pillars that holds up the side, it also pulls down the side, holds it in position, and, and here's the other one. So I've made the pieces. It's really one main piece. This is the piece that you need to understand, that it's, it's got a central crease up the middle. These are all four centimetres. Each of these three sections is four centimetres. And then the angle measuring is also quite simple. It's 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 70 degrees. And at the other end, it's a mirror image. It's 45, 45, 45, 70. And at the very top, you've got a 90 degree angle here. And this at the very bottom, you've got another 90 degree angle. So now we have to push it all into shape. So you fold it down the middle. And then this central fold will become a valley fold on the design and the outer angles become mountain folds. The key thing here is the, the plane that's going to float at the end. This is the piece. So it's got a crease down the middle as usual. Well, that crease has to stick onto this where these two tabs are. It has to be in a straight line so this can fit onto it. So I just put glue on these two central panels. As always, put the glue right up to the crease. Quite important. The edges aren't actually so important, but the creases, it, it is pretty important that you get the, the glue right up to the creases. And we line it up so that that central crease is aligned with the gully on the base page. Smooth that down. Shut it, make sure it all closes down as we want it to. Seems to be fine. So now get this, make sure the crease is, is really well established so that it'll move nicely once it's stuck in place. And this is going to stick onto these two tabs, but we have to put it into the closed position so it can find where it wants to be. And we want the tabs both underneath it, balancing on each side. So I'll put glue on the top there, and glue on the top there. And as you close it, make sure the central crease of the red bit is aligned with where those gullies are, those creases. Oh, 
iron it well, make sure it's all stuck soundly. There it is, but you can see this is without those pillars that I was talking about at the end that are going to pull it flat. So here are the pillars. I've made them according to the length you make them. That will affect whether the floating plane is flat. You can adjust them to make it into quite a deep gully or quite flat. It's up to you. So I've made these four and a half so it will be more or less flat. These have to be quite narrow because as this as this closes, the whole thing twists around. So these actually have to be able to accommodate a little bit of bend in them. I couldn't actually work out a formula for these. So I just think you stick it down so that it's going to be slightly pointing towards the top corner. So you stick it down, you look at where it's going to be in the closed position, where the edge of your floating plane is going to be and you stick it down so that that's going to be accommodated by the red piece. So I'll just put some glue on one end of the, this. It should be roughly here I think and that's going to close down into that position. So we look at where this is going to be. Yes, that does fit underneath the red. So where I've got it should be okay. I'll put some glue on the other end and we can check. Right, we close that down so it finds its natural sticking position and open it up. If you look at it, you can see it's taking a bit of stress. It is, it is twisting a bit. And then we put one on the other end. Just let that glue go off. You can see it's holding, it's holding down this side, it's supporting it and holding it down. This side is still floating free because it hasn't got a, a pillar underneath it. So I'll put this at the other end, crease it well, put some glue on it. Again it's, it's something, something like this and angled towards the, the center of the gully at the top of the page. Just fold that shut. Yeah, that seems to be okay. Again, as it closes, this is still underneath it. It possibly could be a bit further out, but I'm reluctant to play with it too much if it's working. I'll put some under there. and close it down. Right, and let that really go off. So you, you can see, if, if you look at the pillar, you can see it has got a slight twist on it. It's possible that the card I've used there is a little bit sturdy. It's a bit thick, so it doesn't twist as easily as ideally it would. Anyway, there you can see it as it opens and closes, it swings into place. It's quite a pleasing action. And here you've got a gully that you can build into. So you can build a parallel fold, like in those examples I showed you in the books. Or you could build V folds or anything else. You also have these planes. They don't have to be just a rectangle like this. You can play with it. You can make it any shape, cut holes in it. Also, underneath, from this original green piece, it's got so many different planes, all of those can be extended, which was how those, the designs in those other books that I showed you worked. They were additional pieces stuck onto those planes. And that is the alternative floating plane type two. Mm -hmm.